Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an adventure, drama, and action film from 2009 called The Invention of Lying. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. In an alternate universe, everyone tells the truth all the time with no exceptions. People say exactly what they think and feel, which often leads to awkward or uncomfortable situations. The movie starts with a man named Mark Bellison, a chubby, struggling screenwriter in his 40s, who is on his way to pick up his date. He walks around, twisting and turning, trying to find her unit inside a luxury apartment building. He finally finds her apartment and knocks on the door. A beautiful woman opens it. Since humans have no reservations about telling the truth, however absurd and straightforward, the woman tells Mark he is early. He follows this by introducing himself and asks her how she's doing. She tells him that she's a little frustrated at the moment and also equally depressed and pessimistic about their date tonight. Before revealing her name as Anna, she invites Mark to come in. Anna goes upstairs to get ready, leaving Mark alone on the sofa. When she returns, Mark admits he's embarrassed about the restaurant he picked as it might not be fancy enough for her. He opens up about his financial situation, mentioning he has no assets and that his boss said he'd get fired this week. As Anna descends the stairs with a smile, Mark stands up. Anna informs him she just finished masturbating, to which he immediately replies that it makes him feel aroused and he hopes the day culminates in intimacy. Anna candidly tells him she doesn't find him attractive and hurriedly asks if they could leave. Mark agrees and as they continue their departure, Anna picks up her purse. Anna answers her phone at the restaurant, talking to her mom in front of Mark. She honestly says Mark isn't very attractive, not wealthy, a bit overweight, but he's funny and nice. She tells her mom no intimacy or even a kiss tonight. The dinner ends with Anna having three margaritas. The waiter offers his number, but she says no. The scene shifts to outside Anna's apartment. Mark thanks her for the evening, feeling she's out of his league and that the date was a favor to his friend, Greg. He doubts he'll hear from her again. Anna says she enjoyed the evening more than expected, but wants to think about it when she's sober. Mark suggests she call him the next day if she still likes him then. Anna considers this, offers her cheek when Mark leans in for a kiss and bids him farewell. The next morning, Mark goes to work and gets spotted by a tour group. The guide introduces him as an in-house screenwriter, but then points out he's not very successful and might get laid off. Mark waits awkwardly. Later at the office, he has an uncomfortable conversation with Shelly, the receptionist, and his forced fears come true as he faces the possibility of being laid off. Mark got fired from his job because his 1300s films were boring. His boss, who stayed in confrontations, let him go. Before leaving, Brad Kessler, a successful screenwriter, humiliated Mark, calling him a crappy writer. Brad admitted he'd always hated Mark but felt threatened by him. Mark left feeling ashamed. The following morning, Mark wakes up his usual 7.30 a.m. alarm and there are hard knocks on his door. It's his landlord asking for rent. Mark tries to reason with the landlord, explaining that he got fired from work and only has $300 left in his bank account. The landlord insists he paid the entire $800 or move out. Mark, feeling desperate and ashamed, goes to the bank to close his account and withdraw money. The system is down and the teller asks how much he wants. In a mischievous moment, Mark says $800. When the system comes back, the teller apologizes for an error and gives him $800 in large bills. Mark nervously exits the bank, smiling cheerfully when he realizes his newfound trick. He pays his landlord the rent. When questioned about the source of the money, Mark lies, saying he found it on the street. The next day, Mark is at the bar of his friend, Greg. He tries to explain his newfound ability to lie. To demonstrate, he tells a series of wild lies, including changing his name to Doug, being various things like an Eskimo, a pirate, and a one-armed German explorer. Surprisingly, Greg and the bartender believe every word. When Mark asks them what they do with this power of manipulation, both express desires that gravitate towards physical interactions with women. Walking the streets later, Mark tries to test the limits of his newfound power. He convinces a woman that the world will end unless they have an intimate encounter. However, moments away from taking advantage of the situation, his conscience kicks in. He fakes a call to NASA and reassures the woman that the world is an ending. This unexpected and never before seen art of lying marks the beginning of Mark's career as a liar as he uses it to manipulate various situations to his advantage.
Mark stopped a cop from arresting his friend, Greg, for drunk driving on their way to the casino. Mark convinces the officer Greg wasn't drunk, and the cop believed him. Inside the casino, Mark cheated at a roulette by changing bets after the winning number. The dealer didn't protest. He also told the manager he won a slot jackpot but hadn't been paid, and the manager apologized and congratulated him. Mark and Greg had big buckets of money at the casino, calling it an exciting night. Mark comforted his neighbor, Frank, who felt really sad, saying things would get better, teaching Mark that sometimes lies can help. Throughout the following days, Mark used his ability for good deeds. He assisted a homeless man in getting money, persuaded a reluctant woman to happily head to her job, reconciled a feuding couple, and spread joy in an elderly home, leaving residents smiling or even tearful. One evening, he relaxed with Frank in his apartment, enjoying beers and television. Mark stumbled upon a documentary about Brad Kessler's work while trying to win over Anna on the phone. Inspired, he wrote a screenplay about a 14th century alien invasion that erases everyone's memories. Lecture films liked it, and the film became a blockbuster, making Mark rich and famous. Anna rejected Mark despite their successful date. Later, Mark's mother, Martha, had a heart attack and was dying in the hospital. Mark comforted her with a made-up vision of a wonderful afterlife, and she passed away with hope in her eyes. Mark's vision of the afterlife spread fast as nurses shared it. People came to him for answers about what's beyond. With Anna's support, he made 10 rules for a good life, claiming divine communication. He'd said you get rewards in the afterlife if you committed three sins or less. This made him a global religious sensation. Yet, with all his success and adoration, Mark grappled with his personal happiness and the implications of his gift for lying. On a park day with Anna, she asked if being rich and famous would make their kids more attractive. Mark, out of love, told her it wouldn't, even though he wanted to lie. Anna kept dating Brad, Mark's rival, who was jealous of Mark's success. Brad's bad behavior, like monitoring Anna's food, made her uncomfortable. Despite this, she accepted his proposal. Mark wakes up in a fancy house looking like a biblical figure. Anna tells him about her busy work and upcoming wedding, giving him an invite. Mark's upset and asks her to reconsider. Anna says she's marrying for genetics and money, fearing aging. Mark reassures her beauty. Anna gives him the invite and leaves in tears. Later at the park, Anna observes a chubby boy enjoying ice cream. She imagined that her child with Mark might look like him since half the child's genetics would be from Mark. The boy, later taunted by his peers for his size, earns Anna's intervention. She comforts him, emphasizing he's more than his physical appearance, addressing him not as short, fat Brian, but simply as Brian, accompanied by a kind smile. On the wedding day, Greg tells Mark he can still win Anna back. At the ceremony, Mark objects to Anna and Brad's union. They turn to him for guidance, but he declines, wanting Anna to choose for herself. Mark admits his ability to lie, and Anna needs time to think. In the end, she declares her love for Mark. In the final scene, Anna and Mark dine with their son, who has inherited Mark's talent for storytelling. The boy, resembling Mark and also skilled at bidding the truth, assures Anna that the meal is great, even though they both dislike it. Mark encourages his son to finish the food playfully, assuring Anna that their son truly likes it. The movie recap ends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.